just gonna check if I'm live on Twitch on my phone. Okay, cool. So that's what that's what gets that's what gets shown. Uh, that's okay. Can you see everything? So how many people um, submitted some games? So I've got one of Boom's games that came first, and then, you know the guy you just beat up Echo of Light? He was another. Hmm. And then I'll just ask people, you can just ask people in the chat about that game through. And uh, basically it's another great comments first. Uh, what was the one that let me see that it's gone? One that, lets, that shows me the chat, and I just can't remember what it is. <laughs> Okay. So, can you see that? Uh, should be the um, chat. Yep, I see it. I guess. What are we looking at here? So it's just the setup. I'm making sure I'm going set up first. I mean, technically we are live, but... I think this is the first time I'm... So far... So that's just the stream information that you can see. I'll, uh, I'll okay. unmute myself when uh, I need to chirp in, okay? Just so you don't hear background noise. That's fine. Uh, if the guys put stuff that were, that were live, I don't know if it, like, I don't know if it, I, I know I haven't got it set up to like set it out to Discord and stuff, so I kind of love it. It's a little weird.
You gotta do your intro, bro. Yeah, I'll also turn down the in-game music as well. Want me to give you a really cool intro? <laughs> and what intro do you want? Oh, you gotta say something like, Yo, what is going on, my doggies? My name is Moon Doggy. back again. Here we go, guys, yet another Twitch stream. In today's Twitch stream, we are going to talk about and review games today. Who's ready? Can I get an air horn in here, please? Wah, 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 wah. I mean, you can definitely do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop. No, you. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Because there's not a chance I'm doing that. <laughs> cool. Looks like we've got some guys. He's so funny, here. though. Looks like we've got some guys in the chat already. Gonna get some pog champs and some hypes. To be fair, I did enable them. <laughs> I think I better change this to filter as well. Yeah, that can be fine. Sorry to anybody watching currently, we are still figuring stuff out. Or, I am figuring stuff out, because I am not the most Twitch-savvy person going. <laughs> I think this looks fine, so all I have to do is transition between the screens. I guess we can make a start. Brings it all down. Damn. <laughs> ten, ten subs and I'll do a face reveal. I'm pretty sure nearly everyone knows what I look like already. But yeah, um, welcome to the first ever Lang Grissa review, review stream, co hosted by Moondoggy and Artie and Sparks, and myself, Cecil H. Um, if you guys would like to introduce yourselves, go right ahead. Alright, you can go first. You go first, you go first. Alright, yeah, so, yep, my name's Moondoggy, I've been playing since day one, and... Is that it? You've been playing since day one? <laughs> Yeah, that's really it. I'm literally an average player, so it's okay. Why don't you talk about yourself all a little bit, and then I'll... <laughs> yeah. Sure, so like, um, I've been playing PvP pretty much since Season 2. My account is used to be Roy Lee's, but then he gifted it to me around Season 4, Season 5. So I learned almost all of my PvP experience from him until he quit and moved on. Interesting. I wasn't actually uh, <laughs> aware of that. Uh, we've got some people doing JB in the chat as well, so we don't have to rush ahead and start streaming or reviewing games. Um, Artyon, if you want to introduce yourself as well, go, go right for it. I'm um, Artyon Sparks. I've been PvPing, in quotes, 
in season three, but it's developed my style more or less probably season six, seven, just kind of gravitate towards the uh, tank push or new turtle push. I like to just try to survive hits and, you know, make people leave. That's usually my strategy. No, make people leave. Yeah, so it's a fun strategy. I mean, was there watching you beat up the Russian cat dude? Made him yeah, leave. There was times. a couple matches today where we didn't even do anything. They just made their attempts and they saw they can't do anything and leave, and it just saves time. Yep. And uh, I guess I should introduce myself. So, yeah, I'm Cecil H, which I'm sure everyone is aware of. I am the Kaguya guy, the Kaguya teacher, the Kaguya main, the Kaguya everything, because that is literally all I am currently. I have been playing Apex since season 3, I believe? Jump, double check on that. Apex of Glory. So yeah, I've been playing Apex for the last year, since season, season 3. So yeah, Silver Tier all the way up until Minecraft are in top 16. Um, I have always mainly been a tank pusher. It is the strategy I enjoy the most. When I was first getting better at Apex, I actually ran mostly single target trade. This was back when I'm using Dribble for the main tanks. So yeah, I've transitioned from single target brush to tank brush pretty much. And tank brush for like the last five, six seasons. Everyone knows that I like, have white book. It's not very hard to take down. But yeah. Welcome to impart some knowledge alongside my friends who also have valuable advice to give. So why don't we start with the first game? I've already got somebody lined up for me. That is Senor Moran. It's promised the first review of the very first stream. So let's go and bring up this game and analyze it and hope we both can. So we've got Kuma versus Kenji, level 3. See so already, oh, size of weather. So what are we doing? So we go back a step, have a look at the boxes, have a look at some input, mention the group, so things that might not make sense to group of us. So we've got Boomer on the left, right. Yeah, so for those of you that are watching, some of the things that we always look for is counting the amount of tanks, amount of healers, and overall, like, what kind of strategy you're trying to look for. So if you look in Kenji's box, he has about, what, two tanks, I see, Lightbringer and Hilda, and four healers, which is Rosen, Lightbringer, Sophia, Liana, O5 healers. So this looks to be a first pick, either Rosen or first pick a Boro box for the most part. Very, very tanky. Yeah, I would fair enough, but this is definitely first pick Rosen or first pick a Boro. I think in scenarios, you actually probably just want to fly Rosen instead of a Boro. I yeah, I would 100% agree. I haven't seen the picture well, yet. Yeah. And this one, you could just sit in the middle and win <clears throat> with Rosen. Yeah, you can definitely employ like a total strategy to sit in the middle with Rosen. But then Ruben's got on his side, obviously, quite a lot of single target buffs. So there are ways around. So I know Rosen can seem like an impenetrable pull at times, which is why she needs up so many first and second phase bands. I am sorry, I'm still new to this whole Twitch thing. I'm not sure how to set up a bar, so I'm sure I can consolidate with the later. <laughs> this, this is as much of a learning curve for Twitch for me as it is a learning curve for guys having their games with me. So, yeah, Rumor, very single target heavy. He's got some potential AOE to play that elbow. Um, it's fairly standard, like a fairly standard trade box more than anything. Um, it can have a decent match against this kind of tower box, but it is very dependent on the defense, so let's have a look. 
Zero to the standard, it seems very bad. Very, very good. Probably the best unit better right now, but in terms of the best units. Uh, okay, so yeah, th this is the wrong ban side already. You don't ban C2 first in these kind of boxes. Like, in, in a traditional, like, total box like this, the opponent is always looking to pick Aura first or Rosen first. They are never, ever going to pick C2 first. So you pick Wet Hand, that's fine, like, that will be crush turn 1. But your opponent also has two tanks. So yeah, C, Plane, and Toki get banned. Which is totally fine, you don't... Your opponent doesn't want to get fogged by Plane, especially on this map, that's literally escaped from these units. None of them die outside of the Borrow, and I think the Parry Angle gets Sky Archers. I'm, I might be wrong on that. So... Yeah, so the thing with a borrow in this kind of box is that it's extremely hard to kill him. Most people build their borrows to live assassins. So the ideal way to deal with a borrow in these kind of boxes is either to ban him or have enough bypass guard units to follow up. So generally you'll need maybe two to try and assassinate them. Otherwise, if you can't kill him in the whole autumn time period, then he's just going to transform and he's going to be much more annoying to deal with. Yep, I would agree there. So your Pinky Picks Lightbringer, which is obviously not very standard. I mean, it's a good counter pick for Wet Hand. Her entire kit just deals with this hero. Single target, can't be to get a reverse AoE, you can use Light Flow to dispel the debuffs in the guard. There's not a lot Wet Hand to Lightbringer, so already you're at a slight disadvantage. But a hero that just does nothing to this tank. So yeah, you ban Rosen, you ban the plane, that is fine, again, you don't want to get fucked, you don't want to get slowed down. But Rosen, obviously, everyone knows Rosen is the best tier in the game. SP Man, so, SP Man is fine, I mean, it's pro type faction, but this probably is one of his worst maps, though. But it's not worth you to bypass Tori. So I imagine you have to run maybe a uh, sense of those or things. And, and, and the other issue is that you've still got no way to keep the spirit line. But you still have units like Dive Arm or some Pepsi available, but definitely better pitch. You even have a Dank Bar that can help push your box forward. I don't know if you guys agree, but I, I would like if you're going to pick like a, like a support unit or a kind of buffer, you'd probably be coming back more of it. So it just does a lot more. Especially on this map. Yeah, I'm not sure about the, uh, the SP Matthew pick here. But, you know, some of the things that if you're going to try to play Break Lightbringer, then you need to be picking Z2 and Gein instead of, you know, the others. Unless if you're going for, for full AoE. But if you are going for full AoE, you're going to have to start banning all of his healers. Yeah. yeah. That's another stress. So if you're going for full AoE because you've got the potential of yours, rather than ban McLean, you probably want to ban the Omnipur instead. Correct. So you ban both your Sings. It's Nelmo. Again, this is another combo that is really hard to break. Lightbringer plus Nelmo makes the case really hard to do. You can't get to spell the shield if she has five stars. None of the, no five to spell in the game. She has to be hit twice to even right. attack to go. This is also so bringing Die Hard here. Yeah, bringing Die Hard here kind of gets shut down. So obviously, candle aura, crit aura. Obviously, the candle also have the AOE, so this kind of damage is what. So here's like where I would pivot. Yeah, to ban again a Boro and then picking Die Hard. And then hoping to kill something like, you know, um, one of his DPS. Yep, so. Die Hard. Okay, let me collect this. Die Hard is a unit I personally don't like. I think it's very easy to mess with his kill weapons. But it's all about knowing. Like, with single target, 
in it. It's all about knowing kill ranges, especially with assassins. It's a very fine line of being able to kill and not being able to kill. Yeah. So, like, his, your next bans here should be banning either two healers or Mari plus Liana. Yeah, because the only way that Die Hard can kill here is is if he can kill chipped units. So, yeah. you know, going switching to AoE is pretty important. Yeah, it makes Mary here, but like you said, it's a lot of follow up healer. Like, she also dispels before she blink, so you have counterplay to, like, skybreak the drop from this video. And it also has the potential to counter from Die Hard on this thing, but if it's more like Stroud Healer. So, that's good. So, is fine, so obviously she's one of the few units that can just pick off every single week that you have in box for me. Just a one shot one is going, so no problem. That's the key map on the other hand. I guess, for feeling, I feel like you might get to play it, where you can get debuff. Or kill ranges get screwed. It's fine. I think. One of the issues you can find here is like no matter what, he's gonna get a second Burn now. Like you can pick Burn and just have Burn sit behind, but you can't reach him. And slowly advance and pick your up one by one. And you bring a Dank Ball, that's fine. A Dank Ball lets you set up both of these guys and Red Hand to them. So you've got like an enable here. They generally throw in this scenario, but it made more sense to get the Asher Mark just to give Die Hard extra stats. But then, right now, this guy is your big position. So, yeah, he bans Asher and Lightbringer, so you have no table. Picks Burner, very, very obvious. And Builder and Yana. Um, yeah, obviously, Elder is such a critic, which means he does like zero damage. Uh, Ligana is an act together on player 2, which is very strong. But the issue you've got. Picking Rose in here is really nice, too. Yeah, like, you're, like, you're forced into Rose in. If you don't pick Rose in, like, more than likely, you're picking up them. And then, all of your single target damage will get reduced. Okay, so you pick an entire DPS lineup, which is. Fine, but you have very little sustain on a map where you're always going to be fucked up together. So this makes a mess in this scenario. So your dial, you now have two units you need to kill. It, this is probably the scariest right now. If you can't kill this in this mob, like you will just lose up a spot. And if they pick Sophia, I feel like. So feels okay, it's an army buff, so he stats that everyone in the team has a spare spot in yellow. But on the other hand, this guy can totally screw with single target damage. And obviously has the ability to, the ability to stun your units in body mode. So personal preference, I would have picked Bug Man. I don't know if you guys Yeah, I would have liked to pick the Lugner pick here. I agree. But it just like I feel like Sophia's a little overpaid. People see like a pseudo faction mode and feel like that's amazing. And yeah, it is great for stats, but this guy also reduces the stats of Gorilla, which reduces like kill ranges. So it, it, this is more defensive, this is more offensive, but I guess it's just dependent on how you prefer to play. <clears throat> yeah, plus like you can change Werner to Holy so he gets faction buff from Lightbringer. And then not only that. You know, you have you have a better uh, kill range by reducing stats from the other person's team. Like, for example, trying to hit Werner into full HP Lucretia, or trying to get the most amount of AOE damage from Mariandel. So, sorry. Let's see how this game comes out. Okay. So, standing on that hard sneak attack. It's fine, I don't feel like you've got the problem. You guys can see the screen just fine, alright? So, yeah, I feel like this is maybe Young Tenji's more. 
Like, they're bringing like, five to more descriptions. Okay, they are very, very easy. But at the same time, there is a die bot who just simply sniped me. You know, can't he, um, did he bring the, did Boomerang bring the 1C teleport skill on him? Yep. So, like, killing Sophia here would work, I think, because you go 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, oh no, you can't make it. Never mind. You can throw a sword to the other, you know, 1, 2, three. you'd have to bring an air slash to snipe this. Yeah, to snipe the Sophia. Which, obviously, it's great. If you snipe Sophia, like... Like, these are like, like, big brain blows, like, you'd have to know your opponent to do, to try and pull that off, because, say if he just clocks around his tank, and you bring air slash, mm -hmm. suddenly your white hand is tired of game. Right. I don't know how you feel about the, uh, how, like, the true, true choice on each side, uh, are, so we can get something from the game. Well, I mean, I understand it because Shrine Maidens get shredded by fairies, so I can understand the monk choice here. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm not sure about goblins. I mean, if you're gonna bring goblins, then surely you bring Shadow Raid. Like, I feel like Shadow Raid would have done maybe a little bit more than Sky Raid would probably do it. Like, I understand if you bring Steel, which might be this one. Right. The Oracle from the uh, it's okay. So again, you still have to go through the tank, which is the only issue. And I actually lost the game because I brought the wrong skill on a down the part. So I feel like maybe Black Ball might be the better. Skill. Yeah, I would be going AoE here with a Dankle Mill. So like the play that you can make because well, I mean she still has dimensional ex explosion I think, which which gets rid of buffs, and Skybreaker Drop gets rid of buffs. So. You know, you can play around with removing any of the immunities that his healers get. Yeah, and it's obviously so, more chip damage right. as well to set up a kill so die well. But then, I can honestly see Boomerang winning here. Yeah, like Boomer can definitely win. If Kendrick's gone fairly, like in my opinion, Kendrick's gone deep playing once. But if you go, if you do like pseudo, pseudo single target AoE, like you bring like an AoE of like. Sure, and here we go. That's but you can bring Black Hole instead. Alright. So slowly chip and, like, get away at them. So at some point, like, you won't be able to sustain the chip damage. So, let's see how this plays so you have now. Alright, oh. maybe just press the play button, you know, and then just let it play out. Yeah, if we see how Luke's not great here, Sam, because obviously you can just shield, um, uh, Lightbringer, and then Freezy is going to Okay, okay. So, I feel like this is a mistake already. So, you definitely should have set up portal, portal turn 1, there's no reason not to. Right, because that way you can go in. Well, I mean, one, two, three, four. She can only put portals four away from her. Yeah, so, you can so she wouldn't have been able to reach. Yeah, but you can drop the portal like back here. Like, put, put it here. You drop her there. You can get to move two afterwards. Suddenly you have threat range. Right, okay. So right now, like, Ruben's a dagger one needs another turn to set up her. So when you're trying to combo, then, like, your units can't combo effect him. But now we need to down to down and down for So, we won't have it sky all by heart. So, come in. The damage. Get the clock. Oh. Um, uh, yeah. That clock's pretty nice. The clock, the, the, like, clock on wet hands great, gravity forces a reaction from the opponent. Only issue here is that, great, to spell guard, right? So he, like, oh. Kenji would be forced to sit in a cross formation for the rest of the game, until he, yeah. Right. But, no, but, but I actually agree to your point there, so if, if Cess, if uh, Boomer was going to go in turn one with Ham, then he should have dropped the portal down so that Die Hard can follow up. Yeah. 
But yeah. this Marandal's not very tanky, she doesn't have a lot of HP. So you can, I definitely right. think, get away with um, hitting with the Marandal and if they're not dying to Warlock Strong. You know? Right, right. Alright, so then you trade Die Heart for Mary Andal, but then unfortunately Werner or Werner just kind of picks off everybody. Does Mary Andal die in her aura with Miracle? Um, so, again, I'm right there, Spock, so it's 20%. So it's basically 35% less magic damage happening, so the very stupid 35% less damage. It also depends. It's also dependent on what Die Hard steals from our end as well, since obviously it probably yeah, that's true. steals two buffs before the combo. But even then, like. If he steals a miracle, it should be a kill. Yeah, if you steal a miracle, you should die. But even then, you. Say you kill our end, alright? You say, like, you kill, you stun somebody else. Probably or have retreat. to go here, example, stun and burn. So at this point, if you kill my random, yeah, but like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I think that Boomer's trying to set up a retreat for Die Hard. So you kill Mari, retreat into the portal. Actually, you can drop Die Hard back here. So let's see how this plays out. Mm hmm. I don't mind that, I think that's still important to play. Okay, then Sophia comes in and heals. <laughs> oh, that's pretty bad. Alright, yeah. That's over get, already. Yeah, now you get punished for using the speed But you yeah. punish a bit of Tango's magic. <laughs> Does he heal each turn though, even though he's getting fixed? Oh, it's post, okay. Okay, this is not the right play. Yeah, that was definitely not the right play there. But you, you, you did not go for Sophia. Sophia was not the issue. Sure. Definitely mm -hmm. tried to kill Mary. So, go back. So your die hard is here. So you are missing one fairy? Yeah, you are missing one fairy. So you have nine troops, which means 18. So yeah, especially, especially when she has the this debuff, you have to go for Marion. You, know? you are guaranteed to steal her attack block. So she's going to do less tank damage to you. So you just run Die Hard to the portal, attempt to snipe Marianne, treat her, and you're fine. So, yeah, so he can't reach SP map currently, so it's fine. So he can't reach the tank ball. I just didn't know. But if it went for the tank ball field there, I think he would have been fine. Rather than trying to SP map. But then at the same time, it's, like his runner is still exposed. So I think the correct play actually is to. Try and just kill Die Hard, set up your attack stance again. I don't know what you guys make of that, because obviously you're about to see Burn and kill SP Burn. Which leaves Burner outside of guard range. I do understand the uh, 
the kill there because he didn't want to get AoE'd again the following turn since he had turned since Boomer had turned priority. Yeah. I guess you don't want to have uh, something again. Yep. Alright, yeah, so this should, this honestly should be over, because then you just block. The problem here is, is Lightbringer doing a lot of DPS damage. Yeah. So yeah, you are right though, so basically it's, it's Lightbringer carry and it's no way ready for to break up. Yeah, he has to, what Boomer has to do is run away, like with Die Hard, and then try again with one of the healers. Yeah. That's his only play. That's really good, actually. That's really, really good. That is not good. And it's over. Yeah, losing Thai Pop is good. It's just the game. Yeah, that's game over. Ooh, well, okay, that is unfortunate. Yep. Barely gets a bit of against somebody. Uh, that's just bad. Shit, now you can't win. You're a dank demo. I'm just getting open my library. So this is just going to be a library error. I guess it bringing the punks here is fine now as well since they can carry late since the assassin is gone now. Kenji should have moved in there, but that's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's not much Well, he's gonna be able to kill the puppet now with uh, with Sophia and Elmo. Um, uh, yep, there it is. That's game over. Like overall, this game would have been is still 100% winnable. It just I think that there were some issues with priority targeting units, but other than that, like it was almost well played. Yeah, I feel like. I feel like the wet hand play was okay. It kind of paid off with the spell of guard, which you set up set up kills later along with that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you didn't have any follow up to that afterwards. Yeah, that's why that's why Annie would have would have been really nice there. So, all right, want to move on to the next one? Yeah. Oh, so, uh, sparks. Um, your your mate was on what? Celia Light. Echo of Light. <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> someone stole the name Echo. So then he just switched to Echo of Light. Oh, is it the game that I just had with him, or no? No, no, he puts that yeah. song. Oh, is it that game? I thought it was a... It's a no, that, that, that was a different game that he played, like, uh, just recently. But he put uh, four games on his hero card that are unrelated. No, Light's mm -hmm. not Light. Oh, Light. L-I-G-H-T. Oh, yeah. Echo of Light, yeah. 
there is. So it's probably silver too. So yep, it's okay. So you know, with his account, like, he has pretty good units, so he can mm -hmm. make it easy laying. Yeah, like, he he is, um, like, playing by himself, so no, he doesn't have anyone backseating him. So he gets feedback from us on how to build boxes for his comfortable play style. Um, and uh, <clears throat> then we give him feedback in the, on the matches as well. So, outside yeah, just feedback like, yeah. from just us probably impactful right i think it just boils down to an experience issue then because yeah of course yeah know. like a lot of the times he just steps outside a guard and loses and I'm, I'm not, he needs to work on that and i know that he's you know coming down from a long day and work and juggling kids and then tries to scrim on his phone right so right but uh you know feedback is what he just needs right just to get better so I think the vice one and the and the pickles one, uh, to so top and bottom. So look at vice and then that's vice lord, first and foremost. Uh, vice lord is someone who can so vice is someone who plays a strategy at firebox for the most part. Very dedicated yeah. to it. It's not necessarily the best box, but apex shouldn't always be about playing the color, it should also be about enjoying it. If this is what you require, then... Oh is that a land for an IC? Yep, there is definitely a land. It is, yep. The Pog. Strategy Master. I respect that, I mean, my favorite faction is Strategic Masters, so I can definitely respect a, uh, well, almost a pure strategy box. There are a couple of things that don't fit into that, which, uh, uh Rosen being into. So, yeah. Vice plays a very specialized box, it's not the, you're not going to see it very often, but it's a, it's a fun box. There are a couple of players who play like a batch of, batch of boxes out. But Echo Player is a don't in my magic bench to not have your respect, mana, uh, not so much, uh, the creature, Necromon, Ayora. Yeah, so against the box like this, if you see Hilda, Chris, Lightbringer, is there a Hilda or is it two? Yeah, there's three tanks. Yeah. So what you could do is first spend Lightbringer to force the uh, force the tank pick, and then you double ban Elmo and Rosen. So now they're forced on a on one of the inferior tanks, and then they only have a, a couple he healers to go through to protect you from AOE and all that. My guess is it's going to be a first band Rosen seal. Well, it might be against like Vice Lord's Battle Box, where he's predominantly strategic masters and Empire. Like, your first band should always be Rosen. This, this does too much for him. He's not even. I mean, a faction with a lot of it's called Enemy. So. I don't mind like the first band Boston because if you know that it's on the Assassins, it's probably something that's already considered. Like, banning. The only assassin is fine, well, it's not like me. It's a bit slower. Yeah, banning lost them on this map doesn't make any sense, unfortunately. Like, you know, your first ban should, like, if anything, should be either Rosen, Clotaire, or McLean. Those are, like, the top three bans that I would against Vice yeah, on this map. You don't want to get corralled and just die to fire. Right. It's not the best ban. But I can probably understand why in his head he bans Austin first. So he just gets banned out, which is going to be able to probably attack. Yep, Vice, of course, Big Rosa. This enables so much. Yep, so you can protest, so you can't be crushed. Without trying to reduce the amount of damage you take, so it's obviously good to very, very good to turn one. Yeah, but the issue with this is that you can just slap. Uh, What's it called? Slap Hilda around now, if he picks Hilda. Yeah. So there's a bad Lucretia, which is fine. I guess banning Lucretia is kind of dependent on which tank you pick. I feel as though if you pick Hilda, Lucretia is the correct map. And then if you pick Lightbringer... Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay, so he actually oh, picks okay. Lightbringer, which is, which is still fine. I feel as though you could have banned Hilda, right? Like, you could have banned uh, McLean here instead of... 
to the first of claims agree. Claims can just bypass a guard and doesn't really care about what my record is too much. And he can also just trap the guard as well. So yeah, he bans out. Okay, so. I can see, like, Yon is fine, actually. Player 2 active is fine. If it is low in terms of slow, like, if you're banning healers, like, you shouldn't use the spell and grow some help, but they are probably too awesome in terms of tank action. Okay, so. Oh no. He's gonna pick Lanford here. Yeah, so the Lanford is the obvious or... pick, otherwise you can't enable Tower. Oh no, he's about to get Towered. That's alright, it's it's you get Towered only once and then afterwards you uh you never get Towered ever again if you're smart. Or if you actually learn learn from your mistakes. I feel like in like maybe R ranking you can get away with Tower because most people don't care about matching them. Obviously, Toa is actually it's light ringer, because in order to be able to ignore her guard like, like, bypass Soru, you need a future power effect, which she doesn't require. Uh, I guess the nice thing here is this is one of the times where I can say Lana is actually a good pick here, because in general, Lana should be able to one shot. See, I don't actually dislike Echo's picks here, I don't. Like, he can't really. It's just very obvious that Lana is the way to change. I guess the only issue is that if my sword is smart, you just snipe Lana. Okay, so that's actually pretty small for the demons this game. So Tower just can't go any go longer immediately. Like yeah, you can take the first life, but she can't apply it. And Tower can apply a deep. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh. Okay, yeah, Tower's exclusive applies an attack down deep for attacking the right? I'm just saying, I mean, you, you guys might be about uh, that. I haven't used Toro too much myself. So, if I remember correctly, I think Vice Lord has a very, very specific burn. Doesn't his burn, it's either Heart of Gaia or Blood Pact, if I remember correctly? So I think it's... is it were that steel? I can't remember if they're both oh, steel so as well. this burner has to be uh, divine. Right? No. I mean, he has plus one move from, from his three So, like, Yeah, but... This is hard but his own. HP is pretty high. Oh, that's because he's a um, steel. I know for a fact he's steel. Yeah, exactly. That looks like Heart of Gaia because of the high attack and defense. So I think yeah. it's Steel Heart. It's Steel Heart, obviously, in place. That's why I went for it. Wait, did I see that correctly? Did his Lana bring AoE? Yeah. Oh, okay, rip. I feel like, yeah, I mean, you're definitely right, but this is the one fight. Like, you definitely bring Redeems here, because you don't want to get me to snap by Toa. Again, I might be wrong with that, I'm pretty confident that for exclusive applies a default. Uh, also, I think she might get blocked by someone. Alright, I'll go that one. Well, it wouldn't matter because if you brought Phase Shift plus 3C or Dark Reaper, he's not. Uh, Tal won't be able to do it because you you get like 80% DR with Phase Shift. So like, it really doesn't matter. 
So bringing, bringing Dark Reaper plus Sorox is really going to be the most important thing here. Small, small mistake on the spot, probably the wrong, maybe the wrong troops, maybe definitely the troops. I mean, you can't even bring like one single target, one hail, and still bring. Yeah, you can do that. You can bring Phase Shift, Dark Reaper, Black Hole, but like there's literally no point in bringing AoE when he has Rosen. So, like, just might as well go all in on the single target. Uh, let's see how this works. So, choosing to punish by using skills. Okay, I still have to go with that No, I won't. Yeah, see, if that was phase shift there, then, you know, it would have been much, much better, because you would have been able to survive. Yes, yeah, so he brings... He chose to go anti the anti fixed damage, the defensive aura, so... Skin looks a lot slow. Yeah, so it is 6 star, the attack is slow. So, what you can do with... Just act to get in place and proceed to attack Toro, break my strikes, and kill Toro. If we had mirrored um, earlier, you wouldn't have got that debuff, right? She would have lived. Yeah, if, you're, if he had uh, used the mirror on uh, Lana, though, she would have lived. She would have revived with So I was right. Um, Toro's exclusive doesn't provide it. Yeah, it's the right play. Oh, no. Yeah, Rose and Rose and... I guess that comes down to... Yeah. So it goes taller. Yeah, there's no way back. So yeah, the first strike is just too strong. If this was 10 plus to the cardigan, it's fun to eyes. The other issue that uh, Weiss has got here is that he broke weapons. So, attacking into light right here is just gonna fly off as well. Six. Is this is still winnable from right here? On um, Weiss's part, it requires an on echo. On Echo's draw, oh, easily, mm -hmm. but you still have a transformer. Yeah. You just... We gotta just, just sit in the middle and take all the squares and heal forever, right? I don't think he did that. I mean, he has a Marianne. At some point, he's gonna end up killing Cardinal. This thing is only tanking to physical damage. It has three magic points. And a first strike, he totally take it. If I start to win this, it's actually a for to us to do a carry draw. Yeah, like, this is looking really good if he can just get to... get to the middle and surround around the tank. <laughs> Excellent placement of the kind of bird, just a block if I swore down. So the only issue with this is that Lampard is dead. Okay, so yeah, Vice Lord can see it immediately. Which makes sense because Gink can just kill uh Lampard and then either Lampard burn hard gets the switch is possible to win at that point. Do SP Lana's still run Med Ring? No, there's no point. I, say, I don't know. Even just run Dim Jewel. Couldn't you not live like um, the fixed after from Assassins? Yeah, I mean, true, but like the only Assassins that you would be worried about is just Die Hard. I mean, I am not someone who built Lana. My Lana is like 5 star, just from off banner, off banners. 
And yeah, I, I never escaped her. I never really thought she was that useful. Maybe like year one when there was like not our majors. That was about it. So yeah, I feel like Echo played that fine. Small mistake on the Lana. They shift a single target, but it'd be fine. And then there's nothing Vice can do to break the composition. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm so pretty like, pretty happy how we played that out. But go ahead, Moon. Yeah, right. So about the med ring part. So you typically don't want to bring med ring on Lana, mainly because like the only assassins that would you know really affect her, Die Hard, and unfortunately Die Hard can't kill through a phase shift Lana, so there's really no point there. So, you know, personally Cliff, the you know account that I use runs Lana, and I use a full moon or a magic build. I kind of switch in between, depending what I want to do, but typically. You just want to go like full AOE damage, and the scepter really doesn't matter as much on her if you want to go that build. So just speaking from a person that has played Lana multiple times, it's just it's much it's far far better just to use something like Dimensional Jewel. It really helps. Okay, I mean I'm not like I said before previously, I'm not too clued up on how people play Lana. This is not a unit I've ever been interested in building. So. Right. She's pretty much inferior to most of the mana mages in every way. It's not as tanky as Caviar. She has better rate than average. They're playing tank yep. push, survivability is generally key. Obviously, Lucretia has a second life, has better range. And Ashimar is a support unit, I don't want really to call her a DPS mage, but she has her niche. The Adankamo has a lot of utility and a lot of damage. So I wouldn't say Lana is like my preference on. I know a lot of people just like the hero because of life through value, but I, I wouldn't try to shoot on her into a box. Like she's my for people, and maybe a tier people, which is obviously where we're at in Silver 2. But generally, if you want to be making progress, you probably want to end up placing a lot of with somebody else. I have some other games from Echo as well. You said it was the bottom game against Fresh Rings as well. I think, I think the, the, pink, the Pickles won, yeah. So yeah, we've already seen Echo's box, so now we're seeing Fresh Rings box. We've seen it Relatively budget, there's a couple of units here. Yeah. Uh, for example, SP Pine, Tiaris, uh, Rosalio. Very almost three tanks. Uh, it's not my favorite composition for a tank brush. I feel like it's very easy to play around. You just ban the most like well, most of them, like get rid of two tanks you don't want to fight, but prefer. It gives your opponent a lot of control over how they want to play the game. Frozen frozen, that's a good fight right there. Take one, you do not need to ban two DPS here, you can simply just ban two tanks you don't want to fight. Generally, this type of box, you probably just want to ban Light Ring or Chris because Land Beast is probably the easiest to kill the units that you have left. C2 in melee Land Beast and you give it a hard one. So you pick up the end. So now that your opponent's picked up the this is where you definitely have to ban tanks. And you also have to pick up an AOD. If you pure single target agent there, you will end up using that fire. We ban two more DPS. I feel like that's a mistake. 
Because you, in this scenario, if, whenever you ban two tanks, your opponent is forced to tank, especially with it's like with Nerf. And when you ban, that means your next phase is you can ban two DPS from your opponent five. Because now your opponent can pick up all the DPS if they want. Or just simply just to ban one tank and one DPS there. Like I would, I would personally ban Lightbringer and you know uh, Elwin there. No, just like and let him pick a tank, especially if you're going to go AOE. Just let him pick two tanks, or you just ban Crit, ban Chris, and leave Lightbringer yeah. and yeah, you probably and will survive better. Just take get rid of Chris because it's a guaranteed buff. Yeah, exactly. So banning Chris probably be the better play. Some heavy damage, some Chris. Yeah, that's really hard now. Yeah, okay, so you kind of asked to pick Kagia here. I feel like your opponent's banned from three. It's most of the threats that are gone. So you pick up Kagia, obviously, fantastic AOE single target hybrid damage. Right. Tanks, which is incredible. Mario. Oh, picking up Mari here is huge. That's actually really huge. Oh, if he picks up TRS, it's game over, honestly. Yeah, it's TRS. Oh, your wow, oh, pretty. okay. Interesting. How does Echo lose this now, you know? There's no way. Like, from our perspective, veterans, there's no way for Echo to but Kavya and Mariandel are going to be uh, an extremely hard time. Maybe right, and plus you get the AoE from Gein. Yeah, like you have uh, Scooter Dash. Like there's, there's no way. If, if this is me, R, or playing this against this guy, this guy never wins. Ever. Yeah, I agree. Like, don't if you pick Diaris there, he could actually break your tank. Yeah, if you fix TRS, you can just lock no. down your tank and have wet hand or snipe some other. Yep, exactly. And plus you get the the healing from the AoE, so picking TRS here on Fresh Pickle side. Did he win this? Yeah. He did. He just yeah. got really lucky in that, that band pick at the very end. He yeah, he got very, very lucky. Not. Like, even in my tier, I get scared of TRS because it means, like, the tank's probably dead. Yep. It looks okay for now. Yeah, it looks fine for uh, troop choice here. It's fine. Um, you don't need mm -hmm. to bring these this gun. There is no assassin. And you did just magic. Yeah, just bring. Makes, makes magic useless. Just bring fairies here. Or even swords. Agreed. When you have this much of a split of heroes, are the Templar Knights just the better option on, on LB? Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, it would be actually. Yeah, Templars are just bad. Don't get me wrong, they're not the greatest troops in the world, but in this scenario, Wetham doesn't do much, especially when it brings an AOE. Like, a a AOE Wetham just gets it. By Mariapple. Uh, this is also extremely. This is more rare, active, and possible. It's not easy. So, okay, you brought Heaven Sanction, which is. Fine. I would have brought Black Hole. Yeah, there's only one playing um A like A which you can throw it in so. Yeah, correct. But yeah, let's see how it plays out. Yeah, so even like Oh, he got Arcane. sold the wrong unit. We're, we're literally yeah. facing a bronze player right now. Alright. Oh. GG. Yeah, so you also could have had any collect of cars here as well. There is nothing here that can shoot or even kill you. Where I have one kill another. Damage. If you Annihilation, you'd have to pay a bit more careful. But currently, you're totally. Okay, so yeah. It is much too early to be having it, especially when you get access to the first part of the one boss. Yes, it gives you a random card, yep. but at the same time, it could just give you another butterfly, which is not useful. And so, it doesn't do many damage up, and you don't even get any 
increased chance of lock up the bottom part of our lock boss. So right now, it's an extra guard to back you up. Very much so. I would I would have moved um, Elmo here. Elmo one first. But it's okay, like this player is not playing very well, so should be able to just kill everything. So spot is pretty good. So your tank is currently not in forward. And just scooter dash. Yeah, scooter dash back. Like, oh, misplayed here. So I mean, it still doesn't really matter because, like, Wet Ham can't kill anybody. No. I think it's, he wants to just remove the buffs after Wet Ham yeah. goes in. Yep. But Miriam will have to use the water yet. Yeah, Echo is really lucky that this player isn't really playing optimally right now. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Oh no, like... <laughs> okay, so you want to... Sorry, Fresh Pickles, but... You kind of need to know how to play. You need to learn how to... Like, I say this a lot... In, like, other chats, bro. Reading debuff is, like, the most open fucking game. Like, use a lot of time to see how your skills work before you do stuff. Otherwise, you will end up using your games. I mean, it's still winnable for fresh pickles. Like, Yulia can still carry here. Oh, gotcha. Also, you don't need to act against here. You didn't do anything last round, so you didn't trigger yeah. the, the Toyoko power. Or at least act again on a card. Yeah. Yeah, that's the correct move here. I think you I think he probably removes the buff from Yulia, I think, right? Well the problem is you Oh yeah, oh no. Yeah. The problem is that Yulia is still wrong the hero. Tank. Right. That was the wrong hero to kill. He needed to kill Gunner. Yeah, so Gain. if you go back kill a turn Marty. there, Yulia, you go back a turn? Yeah. So, like, the, Jin's in danger here right now, so she could have wrapped around and then walked down the Lightbringer and killed Jin quite easily. Yeah. I mean, this pack here doesn't so, have too much either, anyway. I mean, yes, you have all stilts, but. Uh, there could have been a, like a like a follow from here. Like, I don't know if you can take out the Yulia with the, what's left over after Jin dies, and then the tanks move in. They trap you on the boats. They could have fallen apart real fast. Right. Or just like not move your DPS first. Like move uh, move a tank first to get into position. It's so like moving Landius down over to the boar. That would have been perfect on Fresh Pickle side. Um, doesn't Mariandle also have a skill that dispels the enemy? It's the if they're on water, when they're in water, you, you can remove two. No, uh, I, I think, is it Rocky Restraint that also dispels, depending on how many stats you have? Like, you could have just Rocky Restraint in there and tried to dispel the, um, this part of God the Right. Like, you, you don't need Wind Blade here, like, yeah, it's cool you kill Game Force, but it's also crisp with Land of Aura, so you know. Was Rocky Restraint 2C though? I think it is. Uh, yeah, it's a 2C. It's Rocky Restraint is a 2C, but it's a targetable AoE. So it's kind of like um, Polyol's 1C unique skill, where you select a unit. It's it's like a Reaper's Touch from Mistel. That's how it works. Like you, you got away with this win. Um, but I think you just need to be more familiar with what heroes can do and like read a little bit and then kind of figure out what they can do from there because like the Yulia lockdown could have gone pretty bad um, not just not pushing early like we talked about right uh, like you're, we're lucky the opponent just I almost like borderline hit auto here yep 
Agreed. You know, if, if this was a, a proper player, he would have lost. Or he would have lost. I mean, you would have got punished for that. Whose game are we going to review next after this? Um, ask the guys in the chat, or I don't know if you guys have any games you want. I mean, I can even look at my own games and kind of see the mm. like, more high level games. I'll, I'll let the chat have the option of what they want to see next. Yep. I've got a game versus you, e Cal, and uh, my time to twerk. I don't think I've personally played anyone single for fight for At least not the top of my head. See, now this game is just evolved into a box rather than any kind of strategy. Alright, hey friends, I'm gonna have to, um... You know, sign off for now. I have to go. But, you know, thanks for inviting me on stream, Cecil. Art, I really appreciate it. Do this again. Yeah, no problem. Alright, catch you guys later. Oh, well, before you go, can you put the Sani game on your heart? See you later, man. I think one of the, Which one? Uh, the game against my time to tour. It's also Sani Yeah, I put Harry. it. It's on my hero card. Yeah, it's on my hero okay. card if you wanted to watch it. I just put it on. So what I'm looking I can, uh... Do you want me to put the SCL? game on my card? Do you want to review that? Yeah, we can also play the game on the SCL. Right. Okay. Alright, later guys. See, See you, chat. Later. later. Even here, like, it's so close to Viper in the Dark. <laughs> I also don't know if Echo has all this fruits built, but you could have gone with the fighting. Yeah, when you don't have assassins, you don't have to run shrine maidens because you're really gimping your healers at that point. As a boss, so people can watch this back. I know I want to watch it live or at this time, different time zones. Probably see them. Okay. A lot of the audience will like Brazilian or So, yeah, let's have a look at it. Let's go. This is a recording? This one, right? You're gonna post it on your Twitch? Yeah, like I'll uh, record it as well. Okay. I'll post it on the Twitch something too. I can also post, I'll post it on YouTube. I do have a YouTube account which I can upload to. I'll just have to download the video. Okay. Yeah, whatever the um, method is. That way we can link the, the episode. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as you guys can see, this used to be Roy Lee's old account, see Champion Season 4 and Season 3. Obviously, Moon is a long time player, see he's been playing, played, he has been played in every, pretty much every single season. And there's, a, there's adopted many different styles. Right now, I know he's consolidating with Tank Push. So yeah, let's check out the... Uh, Against my turn, my time to die. There's other people that don't go. Sam Aaron. It's pretty tough. You need box too. Yeah, like Sammy is a pretty difficult fight to fight against. He plays, like I said, a very box style. You can catch people off guard if you don't know how to like, deal with it. So, let's see. That's up C2, that's up also. Mm -hmm. 
So it's just you know, it's just you so we can find the bottom of the screen. Light ring. Or shoot down the bottom. So it's so. Yeah, makes sense. You don't need yeah. also such a hard one tomorrow. Oh, that little one is uh, very scary. I know Sandy's a part is very, very scary. Sherry. Ashamar, yeah. Interesting. She got Kimi no Tsumi or Yurusudaro. She got Kimi no Tsumi or Yurusudaro. For ever, she's the only choker. She could die. I don't know if I'm going to finish checking the background, especially if I'm going to finish checking the background. Pepsi. It also gives you town priority as well. Speed pump, Jenny Mother. Scooby Dash, the attack. Obviously, you can move. Uh, lost up here. Jump back. And you just try and strip the uh, Leon Hart. For sure, dead, right? Yep. Oh, no, oh, just, my just, uh, just, uh, just check what you just spell, though. I guess the forest is also helping as well. Yeah, and the dance partner. Just, only just a minute. If this was unicorns, this 100% dies. <laughs> が君の罪を許すだろう。これは必要な懲戒だ。失敗。はい。ね、ちょっとデスペレーション。我に祝福を。うっ。そう。ウォーロックス。じゃあ、ワンワンワンワンワン。エニダイスバッグ。ロスハ
There's nothing for us can do, she took way too far back. If we back there. Yep, yeah, just missing one wall off. No, yeah, one wall off. Right, so that tended to be two. Zero missing one or two wall off as well. That is so, so close. I mean, he didn't even have an attack buff. It's still really, like... Yep, so he has to suck the Rosen to stop him from dying instantly. So I can see... And that's game, uh, the Empire can't do it. Or a deck while it starts with it. Um, obviously, with Ashmar being silent, she can't do anything, and we sustain with uh, Lockman. But there's some nice plays coming out there. Obviously, you can see like the difference between playstyles and how people play the game at higher, higher levels. So Echo's game, where you can see there was a lot of mistakes that were like basic mistakes, I should say. Whereas, less mistakes on Sandy Harriet, Darby. And it really just came down to victory on just being unable to kill Sandy units at times. We still managed to punch it. Then you picked off Pepsi really early. Excellent play with Boston and Adankamo. Then Adankamo was able to carry, so this Adankamo is a really good pick against him. He needs like just straight up shot him, fire him. With Kaguya, if you had to go single target, does Fireball do more damage than their 3C? Uh, so yeah, because of the bonus damage against the infantry, Fireball would do more damage. Um, Fireball is a 1.5 order fire, and UC is a 1.7. The only, I think, only way UC would do more damage is if we're able to apply debuffs. And that would activate your berries, which would make damage. I'm not actually sure on the between that, like maybe somebody can tell me. It's either very similar or very, or um, very close. So, I don't know if anyone in the chat wanted their game reviews. So, uh, feel free to let me you know. So, still plan to be here for another 40 minutes or so. Or the next day, next slot. You can review the FCL game if you want. Yeah, just give me a chance to. Uh, before any games, honestly, yeah, like, if you don't have any, um, if you don't have anyone to review. from the chat. I'm not sure if anyone else has any. But I'll just carry on with the uh, Sparks' game against SCO. Yeah, we can split. So yeah. SCO, standard metal player, maybe. No, basically it's just trying to find things that mitigate incoming damage or you, the unit itself, can take one hit at least every time. 
Cool, cool. So let's see how the band pick plays out. So, yep, SCL first picks a borrow. Obviously, one of the better units against these kind of defensive boxes. Yeah. Like, my box just screams turtle, so Obero is the best thing to pick. There are ways around turtle. Well, there are ways around a borrow, I should say, as a turtle player. You can just pick more aggressive units. We just, we just decided on things that could live at Oboro at this point. <laughs> yep, so McLean obviously has an extra life in water, can deal with uh, the borrow. I have to pick a tank now. He banned out the two. And I think the Sophia buff was like literally what makes all this like come together in this scenario. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the this is a time where Sophia does excel. So you have units that don't obviously fit Hilda's factions, but the pseudo buff here can enable your killing ranges. And yeah, and loosen his. Yep. So, yeah. Here's something interesting that you won't see too many times, is people bringing Guardian up on Kintoki. So this is just to simply protect the bar from physical damage. As you can see, there is nothing but physical damage on the hot side. So again, we're always you now guard bar. Obviously, there are ways around it. Assassins who can bypass it on magic damage. Not mistaken, it is just physical damage. Yeah. Only, only mm -hmm. physical damage. And it's three blocks away, which is yeah. there's only two tanks, or like just Fargus and him. I can do that. And this is an awkward spot for a turtle because. He's the one turtling, trying to get stacks, and I have the slowest legs in the world because of Lugner and my team. So Lugner is pretty good against like rush pump, so you can to play my blocks. Also pretty good against single target as well. Well, reduce attack at ease. You can see Essie on his tail, and he wants to keep a power up, which is generally fine. see here is plane is only under the effects of regulated from so when you gain four stacks of sin one instantly stun the plane so there is a few workarounds from this that first and foremost the stun is dispellable so you can't just heal it off the other way to just instantly unstun yourself is to use an actigan skill as you get stunned because then the action mm -hmm. would have taken take the uh, use of the stun action so McLean's ready next turn instead of being the same way. I mean, it does slow him down, which is ideal for SEO, gives uh, a borrow more time. But there's also a Sophia in the back of the turn. Can we tell if, like, we must assume, but are we able to look at Obero and tell if it's casted? So, yep, generally, a cast casted of borrows will have, like, over about a thousand points. So I can tell this a borrower's cast that these are very similar to the stats that I have on a, a borrower with no additional pumps. So it's a miracle for any stats. Is it greedy of him to not bring like the origin buff for his old bro? 
I don't think so, because outside of But you've only got one way to attack a moral, and it's probably confident in being able to do it. So I guess a unit most people have probably have never seen too much in Apex in Wrecking. I don't know if you want to describe your favorite. He has all of his talent in one direction that he chooses, so he gets all these benefits. He'll have to reuse that 3C there, which is generally only 5 blocks, but because we're balanced play, we can reach an extra tile. <clears throat> Afterwards, he sets up on an aura where if anyone attacks him in the direction of that he's facing or to like below him or above him they'll take fixed damage equal to his attack uh, by i think it's times one and uh the other oh. thing too with that three c is it makes everyone go in cardinal directions so if you get behind him all these things go away his damage reduction goes away his talent uh, or his three c goes away so he really bangs some people not be able to go by him so if he has if he had Rosenstill stacks, then they don't go in the card directions, they can wrap around quite easily. Thank you for the uh, small open. So it kinda works well with like if you're trying to survive a hit, like the storks will be broken before they attack. So that he works with trying to mitigate damage to the tank. <laughs> It also like lo loosens the ceiling on assassins. You lose like two troops. That could mean the difference. Yep. Like fixed damage or we can't buy it. There are a lot of troops that want to be at certain thresholds to activate abilities. At this point, we're just trying to strip buffs, because the 3C also strips one buff. So yeah, here's a mechanic most people have seen. Is that... When you reach 7 stacks of sin, again, versus Lokna, it will silence you instantly. And that 4 stacks, you'll, you'll uh, get an aura that goes to Rosen stacks, for example. That decreases your attack of him at 6 star by 15% and increases the damage you take by 15%, so it's very anti single target. So, there's the potential here for it, or. Because McLean can't reach a bar anymore, or he's transformed, but what could have done preemptively potentially is just kill Logan right now. This also stops him getting. Like in from active again. Joe Lugnus has obviously made it somewhere. That also sets the potential sets up what happened. Breaks the maidens and score and go to sky bar. So SCL He runs to... away from sorry, go ahead. No no, I was gonna say SCL's obviously gonna be in a way. It's no one show up or currently. Take out Lugna, which is the right, the right thing to do. It's killing Lugna also improves every single sin. So you can no longer. And activating Jin means nothing. He's already blown his load and all his cooldowns. Yep. So Jin's no longer too much of a threat, it is just the Aurora. Now it's time to see where who's gonna live. So the fixed damage for combat there isn't too big. Obviously, a borrow will always get to 40 hits, you can't stop that. So it doesn't matter about the chance. 
But Sophia living there is simply being because of her being on a mountain and the borough not being able to crit, and obviously plus they accept defense is huge. So a small mistake here, most of the score is gold. Just heals back yeah, we should have assumed it was uh, Glory of the World. But we go kind of unpunished, luckily. Sophia reactivates the Shrine Maidens. Uh, so here's something a lot of. So he knows he can't out. kill Sophia, so he's gonna pick another target now. Yeah. So here's something that most people probably won't know. Is that McQueen's tells us kind of in the fact that if you apply them over defensive terrain, so for example, you can see McQueen's tile is on the city wall, it actually stops enemies from receiving the defensive bonus of the city wall because the tiles are treated as stream or auto, whichever you want. So, so yeah, Abara not one the benefits from the city wall is the end death bonus. Yeah, but these also give end death, you just want to see it. So yeah, we also kills on the bar a little. So we And that was the right move because he attacked from behind, so there's no damage reduction on Ricky at that fight. Breaking the passive of Jin. <laughs> So, small mistake here is Sophia doesn't want to die here. I mean, I guess if you want to trap Rosen, that's fine. But Ricky also has a guard, so uh, yeah, I guess feel a stance which uh, and so you guard his damage. So we could have, you could have pulled Sophia back one and kept, potentially kept her alive, but she has a with now to be. Yeah. <clears throat> Most of the more important thoughts come down to when you're in the middle. Because a lot of fights don't go past like five rounds. So now when you've been playing for an hour, some critical thinking kind of starts to go out the window by turn like eight and ten. So you fog, you fog, um, well, you fog Rosen here, which is still blind. Obviously, you can get the city ball. One, two, five takes two. City ball. Still tempting. But there's not really much of it here. But it takes too long for him to try and kill the other, especially going into Royal Cavalry. I don't want to start off up, so I won't. Yeah, he uses Toy Echo. Takes a bit of those off in the Royal Cow. Highlight like Bomber. Check him. Savage Aura. Kill. And he didn't, he didn't heal because he was behind Ricky. <clears throat> Very well for a game. See the power of Ricky here, and it is most definitely built the tank push bombs, but you definitely see the power of Ricky. It's so, probably a, a more offensive version of Auto Cradle. Obviously, a lot of people have seen Cradle back when Auto Popular. Ricky obviously off his healing. Single target damage, 
very well for so many times. Yeah. Um, again, if anybody in the chat has their own. So, no, I can show what I'm like. Oh, uh. So, Sparks, do you want to see one of my games? You can have a look. Sure, yeah. Let's see, a, a Kagua highlight, of course. So, you can look at some of the matches I played today. A slot. Have choose any of them. Obviously, that. Jagger. He's a strong opponent. Yep, I can show my game on Jagger. So, so yeah, um, Jagger, somebody I know, someone, another veteran player, playing Apex a very long time, known for his all in play, he's very aggressive player, like, German has, like, 14 DPS, 15 DPS boxes, kind of four ghost tanks, but in this case you can obviously see Freya as the only tank, Origins buff, so, buff for Ashimar, Boston, uh, T-Jus, from what I can see there, and then, well, myself, I am pretty much, like I said earlier, definitely a tank rush player, very, um, silly in parts, very, I generally only really play units that are extremely hard to kill, or have awesome variable trades, as you can see, I've got Kratos over in my box, this is just me messing around, but like, normally I like to add one random unit to my box, just to have fun with another side of Kratos, Normally he sits on the bench now, it's a bit slow, and in the current meta he doesn't really do enough. There are too many units that are self-sustaining that are roaming, so you can't really punish them. He was a lot better in healer the slow leg against healer the slow leg opponents, or in like fellow tank push matchups, so I might use him when the meta slows slow down a little bit, but people are playing a bit more defensive. But the, generally there will be other units that will want to use that are just better than Kratos currently. For the most part, every other unit in my box is relatively either assassin crew or just extremely durable. And as you can see, I'm not Sparks, it's not the only one who plays Ricky. I also play Ricky, but I play Matt's Ricky. Just because I feel as though I don't want to be like half units, especially when there's a lot of calf tanks in the meta. Ricky gives me a way out against half tanks. Like how I found it, so who's where I'm where I'm starting to use it, and I'm the first pick that ever. Jagger first picks his about the pro type buffs and potential follow up. So I know a lot of people might just see, oh, both of them are pro type faction buff position buffs where I'm. I actually found out both of them because they're both natural they follow up to where I'm, especially on the desert map. The rest of his units have some. Like, none of his units can follow up really outside of T-Jus, so T-Jus is pretty squishy and easy to do. Yeah, the, the love and air is extremely important if they first pick Wet Ham. It's, you, he's borderline TRS 3 seed at that point, if you give him love and air. Yep. So I lose my healers, Wet Ham picks Freya, which is kind of weird for Jago. I wasn't really expecting him to pick Freya next. But picking Freya next just gives me the opportunity to probably ban out the two best meta DPSs, DPSs in the game currently. So, you know, less threats to the other. I'll use Elmo Lightbreaker, very standard, so pick Liana, because player 2 acts again is really strong. Use Kratos and the Dankamo. Uh, Kratos is just good against single target units, so reduces the damage. Um, obviously, just shove Freya away, separate him from. Team as well. And obviously, the fixed damage from Torrent is pretty scary. Also, the luxury in multiple directions if you get hit by his 3C. 
Uh, Dynamo, Dynamo gives me a lot of setup. I have a lot of units that benefit from the Dynamo. Like Git, Busto, Pacquiao, C2, for example. They all can benefit from the. Uh, and she's a mage that doesn't necessarily have to worry too much about Freya. Ashimar is interesting. It's very, very. It's a very big. It's a support unit, which is interesting, because right now I'm not really afraid of anything in this position. This doesn't do anything to my Ranger, and now I have a way to basically deal with stuff. So I think Kaki here, Kaki plus Gospel, well, sorry, not Gospel, but um, Old to Creation is very potent, it's a lot of healing, borderline broken. But these two heroes just combo very, very well together. So I can see, again, it's a bit short range. So, but if I've got McLean and TGS, I don't want to really get far because I don't want to teleport and get anything. Pick up C2, because C2 deters a Nailwind pick. Like, if you hard commit Nailwind, my C2 just needs to be killed, so that'll work. I pick up Ricky here. Uh, uh, yeah, Helder doesn't do anything against a heavy mage lineup, so Ricky is just a better pick. What skills did you bring on your Kagua? So, first, I thought, well, first and foremost, I brought fairies, there's no assassin. So I can get rid of fairies this game. I also brought Black Hole because there's no real dedicated healer. Got some things that can self sustain a little bit. Of, but there's no actual, like, good spelling power, so Black Hole is just much, much better here. I could also get away with Arcane Blast. Obviously, there's uh, four tall mages yeah, and four units. Yeah, four tall units, yeah. But I feel as though Black Hole is just slightly better. It's a toss up between both of them. I just went Black Hole to punish the p -ups. So yeah, as a Lancer Ricky, one thing which should be noted is that I can't use Balance Blade, so my range is a bit shorter. But what, something you can do more effectively is run Tiamat's armor against Mage Gothics. So you take less like, magic damage, which is more or less Ricky's weakness. But currently I know my Ricky is Aeolus' Bell Armor. So, and for the future, when SP Neon is out, uh, Lancer Ricky is a lot better. It's a, a fairly decent counter to SP Neon. As long as he doesn't attack him from behind to a double lancer, because he's a four player, then you probably counter kill him. So yeah, I have to oh, I owed my tank here. Mostly because there's a lot of single target damage here. So, so here's something interesting that I do. What I could do is just simply just heal my life ringer. But I know if I don't, there's a good chance I can bait Jagger into trying to take my first life. Like it's pretty much guaranteed that we're have to take my first life no matter what. The other thing here is that he doesn't have any follow-up without using IBC and buffering my sure. So I know if I can bait where I have him. I know I can punish afterwards, which is exactly what happens. The only worrisome thing for is that I actually do get my god spell, so potentially it's a little bit be on my part.
So yeah, I lose Ricky here simply because my rod got dispelled. Even with TMR, I, would, I still would have died. There's no way I lived there. I took 45,000 damage. So I acted in Kaguya, simply so I can apply Black Hole, Break Sword, Splice and Debuffs. My Z2 can take it hit, obviously she has extra life, but I have two holes around, so I'm always retain a life. Dark Reef, that takes my first line. Do I use Z2 to Like, I'm gonna punish the short extension. So I jump to the ball, I get. I get uh, my life back. I can use uh, a 3C and just kill the chip instantly now, which is exactly what I do. That's one less DPS for Jago. Z2 uses another life, but it's fine. So now I can reply Brain Door to Guard Range. And I can simply just reflect lives on Z2 now. So I don't get any debuffs here. The prayer is immune to whatever debuffs I threw at her. Currently she's immune to stun, but I think this prayer is also as well. So yeah, closing with the IVC. He activates Sensei Muse, which is smart. The main thing is that none of my skills can be dispelled. He also can't apply the, the Soldier Breakdown, so my Light Break is fine. So now, this is more of a grind game for me. I just need to slowly grind down the shooters with Kaguya. It's easier. Like, Jagger is very low sustained. Fill my uh, talent stacks, that way I can't be dispelled again. See, I also don't like, hit with C2 though. There's no reason for me to do it. I can simply just reflect my life. The swinging into Freya is extremely dangerous, especially as a melee. Most Freyas tend to be holy on. I can't tell if this one is or isn't currently like that's partner, but considering she was a to two of my debuffs earlier, I would be more or less surprised if this was a yeah. Now it's still not immune to damage taken up, so uh, immune to potentially I might have silenced her or something else. Black hole. Now obviously, now that I can just consistently throw a black hole against Jagger is, is pretty much how long until his units get killed. It's got very little sustain. As you can see, he runs into my ring where almost ends up killing himself. Otherwise, the defensive formation, unfortunately, this doesn't not heal my mind but herself, we only need those troops. Did the IBC bring like 2C? No, oh, she brought Mass Attack because she had no way to. There was no other way to like buffs. So, yes. so I can forever stop myself from seeing why I'm looking for a keeper. As long as I have 5 stacks of the possible effects, because it won't be good. It'll never get dispelled. So, pretty dangerous here. My light ring goes pretty close to dying. So, yeah. This is a tech against Freya, just in case they are holy off. Bring an air slash on the Zerodo. That way you take much less of damage and don't get killed instantly. So yeah, no, no I can see there with the AB damage. 
So, my C2 still puts in work. It's not the media build. My C2 is actually soil. As you might have seen. I just prefer it for tank pressure. Like, my objective is generally not to go all in and try and kill everything. It's generally slow grinds, wear people down. So, yeah, my light ranger barely lifts that up. But Jagger runs away because there's no way he can now. I think it's now the same. Fairly close, but. As you can see, my units are fairly durable. They can take hits. But yeah, um, obviously I have many funny games, but I think I'm gonna wrap up there. The next slot starts in a couple of minutes. And it's almost 9 p.m. So I'm gonna pass some other stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for the recaps, Cecil. Problem, thanks for joining me, Sparks. Um, guys, we are probably looking to do this on a weekly basis, either Friday or Saturday. So hopefully you guys can tune in and learn some stuff and hopefully have some games of your own to provide. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, again, thanks for being with the Sparks and obviously thanks to the project as well. So yeah, um, see you guys next time. <laughs>